Linko is a brand of radios that I've admired ever since I've been a ham, and this is probably their most milquetoast standard offering, the DJ VX50. Just a dual band radio. No different than what you might see the FT4X from Yesu, even the cheaper Chinese radios. Dual band radio, no big deal. But the reason why I like a Linko is not because of radios like these. It's because of radios like these. Dual band, but what are the bands of operation? Well, two meters and how about 1.2 gigahertz in a handheld. They made a version of this that also had 900 megahertz. Not many radio companies do the quirky things that Alinko does, the weird things that Alinko does. Case in point, still one of my favorite radios for those of you that are into APRS or packet radio, the Alinko DR135 series. This is the two meter only radio. They have radios that'll do 220 megahertz, They'll go to 70 centimeters, six meters. They have one for six meters as well. All kinds of different options, mono band, but also designed to accept uh, TNCs for packet radio. A weird option. Look at, note the cooling, note the fans, note the design of this thing. Spartan is all get out, but designed to work packet. There's literally a couple of buttons you push and it puts it into a packet uh, simplicity mode for TNC. There's even a packet, a very simple KISS TNC you can get for this for doing packet radio that goes internal to the radio. Not the way I would recommend you do it with this radio, but nonetheless, quirky and cool. So for me, when I was a, a ham, starting out as a ham, I was exposed to radios like this. This is the DJC7, which for all intents and purposes is probably one of the smallest radios that it was ever developed. This is a dual band, yep, VHF, UHF radio with a speaker. Mine is a little shaky because I had to modify it with a custom battery, but yeah, this is a two meter radio. This is a part of a credit card series of radios. Alinko, from my point of view, is the is the weirder manufacturer within the major Japanese manufacturers. They aim to be a little bit less expensive, but also offer some things that other radio companies are just not interested in doing. And that's what always makes me interested to kind of see what they're going to do next. And I hope they never lose that really cool nature about them. But today we're going to be looking at this, which is the first of the credit card radios, the DJC-1. This is supposed to be just a, a, an immaculately maintained radio, and the box you can see is really quite nice. I believe these were manufactured in 97, they began manufacture. Quite a cool little radio, so let's take a look at it. A little bit different than the boxes we're used to today. There's boxes within boxes within boxes, it looks like. And this opens out like a so. Uh, there is an AC adapter for this. Oh, there's a speaker mic. Ah, we'll talk about that in a second. Yes, that is uh, it's actually required. There's your AC adapter. We'll hang on to this for a second because uh, this is actually required uh, to use this radio effectively. We're going to need this bad boy. So let's... Oh, the battery... See, look at this. It's got a, a C1 box and a battery charger box. This is what will connect to the AC adapter. Let's check this for a date really fast, see if we can find it. This product is equipped with a lithium ion battery, which allows charging approximately 500 times. Under ordinary temperatures, if the power easily turns off with a fully charged battery, the battery might be dead. Hmm, okay. That is something I noticed uh, with these radios that they did not use the greatest batteries, but the good news is, is that you can easily swap them out they're not easy to replace the batteries for. Um, 1997, there we go. Okay, cool. So we got some verification of what I was talking about. Okay, let's move this aside for a second. I expect to see something very similar to the C5 being the fifth iteration. This is the first generation, which I'm kind of excited to take a look at. So thanks to the person who made this available to me. This is like literally unopened. Holy smokes. The charger looks almost the same. It is the same. This is the same charger. Okay, we'll leave that there for a second. All right, into the box we go. It would be interesting as if I can... Ooh! Different colors. There's another Japanese-only ad copy in here, it looks like. A couple of... Wow, they even kept the... Man, they did a meticulous job in keeping this. Look at this! 
Looks like the computer consoles on the Starship Enterprise from the next generation. Look at this. <laughs> That's super cool. All right. Yeah, a bit of information on charging. I do not know Japanese, so you can pause this if you want a better look at that. Oh, hey, never mind. Uh, did they really highlight this or is this printing? It takes about two hours to fully charge. Green lamps. Okay, I know how these charge. We'll show you how they charge in a second. <laughs> Very cool. So a couple of things changed over the course of the development of the DJC line. Oh, there is a pl there's a little plastic sleeve. This thing is in immaculate condition. Holy smokes. So I can't really e express to you how low the power... Whoa, okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. I don't want to damage that. Let's grab my... Oh, wait, wait. Oh, look at this. Look at this telescoping antenna. Oh, that's it. That's all it's got. No way it turns on. <gasps> it turns on! I can't believe it just turned on. That's insane. Okay. So compare and contrast here. This is the last one of these, the C the C5. Um a couple of things I, I prefer in this, the telescoping antenna. The C5 had a screw-on antenna, which uh for all intents and purposes, every one that I've seen that has survived the years, this being included. They all have a slight bend inward for some reason. Like, this is a weak point. Uh, plus, obviously, th they're both going to be a problem if they get damaged. But, yeah. Now, just from the looks standpoint, this is a dirtier radio. I appreciate it. It's been, it's been used a little bit more. But take a look at just the color way on these two radios. This is a way more attractive radio. The lighter silver color, the blue, that baby blue against the yellow. The yellow is a little bit brighter. This is muted. This almost looks like a... A 90s electronic football machine is what this reminds me of. Let's see on the flip side here. C1T. Uh, they both comply to BART 15. That's very good. Let's take a look back at the front here. They have almost the same battery of arms on the radio as far as how you get it to, to function. Function. There's no band button because this is two meter only VHF. They did make UHF versions of these as well. And to keep, to, to make sure we're all on the same page, I don't know what the stated power output was on the C5. I'm guessing it was one watt or around there, but there you go. There were mods for both of these. And in fact, I, I think I did one of the mods to make this um, uh, a little bit more open with the, with the transmit frequencies or something along those lines. I can't remember exactly. But VM, so that's uh, VHF, memory, monitor, call, up and down. And this had 20, count them, 20 memory slots. So let's let's go ahead and, and take a little bit of a look here. Take a little bit of a look-see. So we're gonna go up. No, we're gonna go down. Whew, look at that. <laughs> we'll get there. Wait, if I function, yeah, okay. So function up, function down, that guy moves there, function up. There we go. One, four, six. And we're going to go down to five, two, zero. Okay. One, four, six, five, two, zero. I think we do function memory right. Nope. Hold it down. Oh, wait. Yeah, see, it's got an offset. I don't want that. Nope. Okay, there we go. Red light means it's transmitting. I got it. Now, this, this radio is kind of difficult to do a test on because, uh, frankly, I can't tap into the RF other than do like a proximity field test. Also, there's a, it's not proprietary, but it's definitely a small connector for this headset. And that inline is another problem. So you need to have earbuds that match this smaller diameter, meaning something like a traditional 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is, is just too big. And so the solution that they came up with was to include this little EMS 50 microphone speaker remote clippy business. So you plug into this 
and turn it on. And then you volume up. So you click the little button for volume and click it again for squelch. Let me drop the squelch. And now you can hear the white noise. This is the actual white noise on this little speaker guy. Now, this is not ideal, right? For, for obvious reasons. If you use this in its most likely use case, which I, I think the most likely use case is when you're in and around other ham radio operators. This is a fantastic option. If it's a ham fest, whatever, this is a cool little radio to keep on you. Not much else other than that. Yes, uh, this one I believe has the capability to do CTSS tones. I don't remember if this does or not. In fact, let me, let me see if it does. That's why we have manuals. Ha! It certainly does. It has a tone encoder mode and a tone burst mode. Uh, and then obviously it'll, it'll do frequency shifted offsets, which we expected it to. That's, that's not a big deal. Now that I see this though, uh, I'm going to see if I've got a, a, a fitting for this. I may have a matching plug. Also, I thought I had an extra one of these that had a traditional headphone jack. Uh, let me, let me go grab my, let me go into the vault of, of mist of ancient ham radio equipment and see if, uh, oh yeah, see, look at these optional accessories here. Earphone, microphone, tie pin type with straight plug, earphone with straight plug, conversion cable, so the conversion cable likely lets you go from the tiny plug to the regular um, 3.5 millimeter jack. Speaker microphone, they actually made a decent amount of equipment for this radio as it, it was very popular. It was, it, was a, it was a very popular radio for the time because of its size, not because of the power output, which again, 300 micro milliwatts is, is not very good. Well, alas, not the solution I was looking for. Uh, turned out I had this Comet. This is also an older accessory. Check this guy out. This Comet Multivox Microphone VM3, and it has this uh, tiny plug here, and unfortunately, it's not the same uh, wire type. But anyway, let's uh, let's do a little audio test uh, real quick here. This is the. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to take this guy. It does have a mic, so I can just turn this on. Yeah, turn this on. We will we'll use our our C DJ C5, the uh, the older brother. So you guys can hear it. So here's here's that. We'll put the microphone right there. Kilo in the six November Alpha Zulu. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Uh, volume up. Kilo India six November Alpha Zulu. Um, that's that's not great. Let me let me let me do something here. I'm gonna use my DJ VX fifty to prop this guy up. Like that. Stop. Don't move. Then apply the microphone, and I will be back. Kilo India Six November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India Six November Alpha Zulu. Yeah, I have no idea how that came out. And and for a bit of reference here, my my favorite small radio is the Yesu VX3, which I've I've talked about in the past. This radio, it seems like they're relatively the similar size, but then you turn them sideways. And oh, buddy, um, it becomes pretty clear. Even this one is this one's even thinner, right? Credit, literally, credit card radio. Now, what's the difference here? Well, this was made in 2007. This is literally the year that I became an amateur radio operator when this radio came out, and this was 1997 or somewhere around there. So this is almost a decade of difference in capabilities. Vastly different radios, but um, yeah, I. I love the small radios and these these Alinkos, particularly this year. The monoband ones are quirky enough with their mic earpiece and this <laughs> this telescoping antenna that it like it could fit in your pocket and it was just a fun little radio to kind of keep with you all over the place. So if you got an eye out for these, the more usable one, if you absolutely wanted to actually use them, the C5 is going to be the one that's the most usable. You are going to be a little frustrated with the fact that it's uh, it's a special or you know non-standard, if you will, earplug jack, and then this the antenna jack is obviously not something that you're going to be able to put a lot of antennas on. But you get the added capability of it being dual band VHF UHF and having an actual speaker. So 
There you go. Keep Alinko weird. I continue to like what Alinko does. I think they are a fun company. And uh, I, I hope they keep doing these quirky things and they don't let go of this aspect of what makes them, I think, a really fun amateur radio company. So thanks for watching, guys. KI6NAZ, leave me a comment below. 73.